red, FR5ED, and the 5 is still silent. Today we're going to do a review of probably one of the, the better known or best known IPAs, and that's Dogfish Head 60. Um, the 60 means 60 minute boil, which is pretty standard boil, uh, but that differentiated differentiates it from their 90 um, and that their dogfish had 90 and they even have a dogfish had 120 that's of uh, very limited availability anyway let's crack this oh let me let me double check on the uh, ABV sorry I didn't have that ahead of time uh, it is uh, hmm it's probably on here somewhere I'll probably show it on the screen <laughs> we'll do it that way oh wait, here it is six percent uh, right on the very front should have checked that. Anyway, um, the uh, the founder uh, and uh, owner, founder, president of Dogfish Head, uh, Sam, can't pronounce his last name right off the bat, uh, but uh, he's got a great book for those of you interested in home brewing. Uh, it's called Extreme Brewing, brewing. Sam Cal Cal Calagione or something like that. Okay, here we go. Let's give a pour. Ooh, it's already starting to foam out of there. All right, here we go. Ah, there we go. All right, have some sound effects there in the background as somebody is trimming the lawn. All right, let's take a look at this. It's a it's a light straw color, <laughs> and again, if you can hear all that commotion outside, just ignore it. I'm trying to. It's it's kind of a straw color. It's it's a a light one for an IPA compared to some of the other ones that I've had. Uh, some of them go into a, all, all the way to a deep copper color. And again, it all depends on what malts, uh, grains that they use, whatever's on the malt bill. Um, but anyway, seems to be quite active and carbonated there. Lots of bubbles on the side of the glass and coming up uh, through the glass. So none of that's either good nor bad, just observing. Uh, didn't get much of a head out of it. And of course, I have a very conservative pour, apparently. <coughs> so anyway, um, the head uh, never got to even one finger, and it's kind of uh, abating right now, which doesn't seem like a good thing but again this this is a famous one and a very highly regarded one so let's go for the smell yeast definitely get yeast get some citrus in there tangerine sort of citrus I'm going to swirl this around try to you know break loose some more uh, hop aroma not not a lot of pine it is fruity it's almost a uh, mango-y uh, tangerine Melon, almost a melon. Mango, I do get some mango in there. Pineapple. <laughs> it's fruit salad. It's not that fruity. It's just I'm trying to pick out some particular, you know, uh, uh, aromas in there. Not getting a lot of that Christmas tree pine smell at all. And I'm not sure I'm capturing any floral, but it's a very nice aroma. Uh, it's just maybe if I had gotten more of a head on there, there'd be more of an aroma release and and uh, would have been more exciting. But anyway, it's, it's, it's pleasant. Let's taste it. Mmm. It's good. It tastes pretty balanced. I'm getting the, uh, the... Let me think about the malt here for a second. The malt is nice and mild. Uh, for me, and again, it's just my personal preference right now in my my journey with IPAs. Uh, I, I don't care too much for an overwhelming malt because to me it's all about the hops. This has enough malt there, and, and it's you know, just a mild biscuity malt. It's nothing deep and caramelly or anything. Um, you know, it's there. But let's let's go for the hops. Not tons of hop flavors or are are jumping out. I expected a lot more in the way of citrus and pine and floral in the aromas and in the taste. Um, the bitterness, I, I don't know that they put the IBUs on here, but I'll bet you, I'm just guessing, not more than... Not more than 50 or so. No, I'm not seeing anything. I'm not going to spend too much time trying to read that right now. Um, there's enough bitterness there to make it interesting and, you know, make it 
uh, qualify as an IPA in my book. Uh, there's, in the way of hop flavor, it's kind of in the background. You've got the, the malt, the bitterness, and almost a generic hop flavor. I'm, I may be sounding a little uh, naive in my description because I'm sure other people have rated this thing very, very high. Let me give it another chance here and see what comes to mind. Wow, drawing a blank. I hate to, I hate to be one of the probably very few who's not enamored with this. Um, I do have a dogfish had 90, a single bottle of it waiting in the refrigerator that I will review sometime in the near future. I believe that's a double IPA, 90, 90 minutes, and it's higher alcohol volume. Um, and that's probably much more hopped because they continuously, dogfish head is uh, the continuously hopped IPA. So anyway, this one, it's refreshing. Hang on, let's see just how refreshing it is. It's it's pleasant. But when I'm reaching for an IPA, and I don't know how many of you are of the same mindset, I want to pour that in the glass and just be overwhelmed with a bouquet of all those hop essences and, and just wallow in that for a minute before I even sip it. When I take that first sip, I want to taste the orange tangerine grapefruit citrus in there, and I want to have that, that nice piney Christmas tree taste in there. And and then even even some floral essence, carnations or whatever kind of roses, you know, up in the uh, sinuses. Um, and, and I want a good amount of bitterness to really bite on the back of my tongue to let me know it's there. Um Maybe I need to switch to double IPAs exclusively. <laughs> but anyway, it's not unpleasant. I wouldn't reach for this first uh, when I'm reaching for another six-pack of IPAs on the shelf. Um, so I'm kind of neutral on this one. Uh, and there you have it. That's a Dogfish Head 60-Minute IPA according to Fred, FR5EED. 